What's going on, Soul Nation, and welcome to another New World Eternum video. The future is looking incredibly bright, and I get to say with so much joy, I was wrong. I did not think they were going to be releasing the roadmap here today, just a few days before Thanksgiving. And if you're an American here celebrating Thanksgiving or celebrating it overseas, or if you're just choosing to have some turkey this week, gobble, gobble, everybody, let's freaking go i'm so glad i was wrong i've been waiting for this i was like don't make us wait till december oh my gosh what did they make us wait till january this felt so much like new world getting back into its stride getting back to a return to form and i'm going to talk to you guys today especially as a developer myself about what this roadmap means, how I interpret everything that they've said. I'm gonna give you guys the highlights, the lowlights, and so much more, and then we're gonna end with our message of hope like we normally do. If you guys enjoy new world content, if you like MMORPG content, you're in the right spot, and if I earn your subs, sound off in the comments below so I can officially welcome you guys to the channel. This is gonna be fun. This 2025 is going to be so much fun. And unfortunately, it starts off with kind of a whimper, but then gets into some really good stuff. So let's break down the roadmap. You'll notice a few things. Next season in development, and then finally in exploration. Here's how I interpret this breakdown. Obviously, this is coming January 14th is the estimate date for season seven to drop. Uh, this is the weakest uh, in terms of this entire roadmap. In development, this is where we're talking season eight, season nine, and that's where we start to kind of set that kind of time frame. They are actively working on it. This is going to be something in the future, but as far as what falls on what season, well, this actually gives them a lot more flexibility. We're working on it. We didn't hard commit that this is gonna be season eight, for example. It ended up shifting to season nine but it's a better product overall. A couple of things they also did not talk about on this dev update was another version of the PTR. This is something we saw prior to New World Eternum, but it sounds like season seven, they're actually just kind of baking that in with the new OPR map going into a preview mode. I actually think that's probably going to be for the best. They're gonna see some real telemetry, get a lot more feedback, and you don't have to go install a completely another client. Anyway, I think of in development is basically what's going to be coming out and rolling out here in 2025 with in exploration being the last category, what to expect in the new expansion. And that's right. They have not officially said the word expansion, but I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to gift out members if I'm wrong. Uh, and that is going to be something that's going to be interesting. If you want to see my live reaction to this, be sure to check out Ginger Prime TV. That's where all future live stream and reacts will live. The link is in the description. I'd love to have you over there. You guys have already pushed me over 200 subscribers and we've got a little bit to go. It's not monetized yet. So you actually get to have an ad free viewing experience. So hopefully you guys enjoy that as well. And thank you. If you do subscribe over there, I do appreciate the support. But like I said over there about an exploration, I define this in mentally and mental math as an expansion this October. New weapons, new raid, raid difficulty levels, territory system overhaul, influence, tower, claim, siege system with building. This sounds the most interesting. All instance content made available via matchmaking, company hall with storage, thank you very much. Rank PvP, procedural expeditions with extraction, new PvE modes, new exploration collection systems, end game rewards system and overhaul, zone up levels, which is basically where they go in and do another pass on the zone, making it better. New zone being added and new trade skill. Now, some of these in exploration items might not be married to the expansion itself, and that can kind of make sense. So you might see some of these things shift in prior to that. But ultimately, this is kind of a perfect roadmap, in my opinion, because I think time frame has been one of the things the, te the team has struggled with and which has led to, I think, a a lessening of trust. Also, their marketing didn't help going into New World Eternum for veteran players, but if I was going to then split this roadmap into two different categories, new and existing players, next season, season seven, very interesting stuff. In development and inspira uh, exploration, this is really speaking to the veterans, which makes sense because New World Eternum's out, and as time progresses, uh, you're going to see that. Let's shout out one of the hugest features that I think is important, and everybody's going to have your own list of high priority items, but and it, like the cross character progression, which is listed here. Now, 
Oh, baby. Like, this in and of itself is so interesting. It says, include seasonal worlds, wraparound XP, and Umbral's version 2. This is all part of the end game progression improvements. Cross character progression would be so huge for me because I have an Xbox character and I have my PC character and it would be so great not to have two characters, like two separate characters. If I want to play on my main character in Fish, I should be able to do that, but I can't because of reasons. Those reasons look like they're finally being addressed and I think that is a good thing. So shout out to the team. Cannot wait to see that implemented that was always the biggest weakness of new world Eternum from a launch perspective now that looks like it's going to be addressed let's go through season seven i, I know i've kind of jumped around here a little bit but this is we're gonna break it down season seven seasonal world one pvp seasonal worlds what are these these are just worlds that live and breathe across the season and then eventually get shut down so you have a couple of things here First and foremost, it's kind of like the fresh start server experience. Sounds like they're going to be doing that for each season. The second thing you actually have going for it is that they can change the rules of the game without making the rules ever for change for everybody. So you opt into it. This first season of world fully on PVP. This is so exciting because you can start to imagine just the insane things that they can start to do with these seasonal worlds that they couldn't do before. Imagine if from a PVE perspective, if we wanted that old school Final Fantasy XI style combat where you like the world is going to kill you unless you take friends and imagine they have a world where it's like, yeah, if you go, there's no solo in this game, you know, in the, on this server. And again, it doesn't impact the rest of us. But I think this is in terms of a marketplace of ideas. This is a great op opportunity to put up or shut up. If you constantly keep saying like, well, if they only made it like this, I, I would play. And then they do as a part of the season and you don't. Well, that's interesting. But what's more interesting is that good. I like what good ideas surface. What do the what does the community actively want versus what do they say they want? This is that action versus speaking. And I really am all in on it. I cannot wait to step into a seasonal world with all full on PVP just to see how it feels. Maybe I'm going to hate it. Maybe I'm, it's going to remind me of how things could be or might have been. But if anything else, I'm, I'm all in on it. And the fact is, is what I've been advocating for for a long time. What will be interesting to see is that as the seasonal worlds progress and as they do all these different rule sets for the different seasonal worlds, what do people want the most? And then do they kind of adhere to that? Do they say, you know what? We really hear you. We're going to make one world that is just this and we're going to bring in these different rule sets or it sets up a potential future where we could have private servers or when i say private servers where it's like the, a community voted on server that has a certain rule set uh, or more but that will be interesting to see obviously for the opr fans who've been wanting a new map this confirms that we're going to be able to play it a little bit they talked about weekends we have no hard commitment on if it's one or, or more but I think this is going to be great. That's going to allow them to get some telemetry and really kind of figure out what they need to do. So that's going to be great to see. Mutated expedition upgrades, M3 and matchmaking, new rewards and unified mutations. This is going to streamline things. I am looking forward to seeing how people react to this one. New daily solo trials. They showed off multiple trials that are going to be entering into the system. I'm I like the daily solo uh, aspect. I think that's another good piece of content for people to take part in. Combat balance updates every season, new artifact and perks every season, and seasonal events and world bosses every season. And so you can see here what's really unique. What's missing though? Well, you don't see a new expedition. And I think that's a big weakness of season seven. Now, if they come in in the last, in the ninth hour and be like, hey, or the 11th hour, the, uh, here, here's an expedition, I think it'd be great. I think an expedition would round this out quite perfectly. Let's jump back over into an exploration and talk about new weapons. They said multiple new weapons and increasing the cadence of how weapons roll out. So I don't know if this is going to apply to a pre expansion new world, uh, but I would really hope to see it. And they're prototyping multiple new weapons right now, which means that as those things get finished, we might actually see weapons roll out, at least if nothing else. Like I think if they had a new weapon once a year, that would be wild. At some point you do get bottlenecked, but I, I would love to see it. We're all hoping for daggers. We're all hoping for new <laughs> new ways to play and new weapons. And I'm I'm really interested to see how that plays out. Anyway, I just wanted to make a note on that. Let's focus in on what is called or what they are thinking midterm because this is the near term. This is mid and then this is far further out. 
new seasonal worlds. That makes sense. That's kind of tying into this territory system improvements. I hope, and they're talking about influence tower and overhaul to territory system in the exploration. So they're going to improve it. And then it looks like they're going to overhaul it. Personally, I really would love to see them bring in some Final Fantasy 11 style uh, territory where if nothing else, you can have wars and you can have the, the races account and weight at 90% of the overall uh how, how things are determined but it would be nice for the crafters and the gatherers and the PVEers out there to have some level of impact for their faction on the territory by just being in that fa in that territory doing various different things that's what i would love to see and then you could total that up once a week to add points to the board i don't know if nothing else at least could be another leadership <laughs> leaderboard kind of aspect uh, they, we already talked about end game progression improvement because cross character progression is there. Pickup wars are coming. This is the mock war system. It didn't sound like it was being made into matchmaking. So I do think there'll be improvements there when they talk about all instance content going into matchmaking. Maybe that's the upgrade, the upscale of it. But if nothing else, companies will be able to challenge each other to wars. And as far as things get slotted, I think that's going to be really great to see. I, for one, am very excited about it because the wars have always been out of reach and the longer time has gone on and the less time that I've had to play. And I, I, it's more of a confidence thing. I'm worried that I would set the team back. And so pick up wars are great. Crafting improvements, new PVP modes. They talked about capture the flag and so much more. They even talked about a potential battle royale mode. Uh, and this is something that I covered over on Gender Prime for uh, No Rest for the Wicked. They're, they're even kind of ball gaming that and whether you groan at the concept of uh, battle royale or not it's a mode that has clearly continued to withstand the test of time minecraft and fortnite continue to dominate much of the gaming uh you know conversation and i just think that it doesn't mean that it has to be your be all end all experience but just the fact that if it's there it becomes an option and back into the new seasonal worlds and in all of these things it allows for experimentation, uh, iteration, and finding the fun. And if you can make it fun, why not? Let's go. Uh, invasion difficulties being added. They're talking about adding in invasions also into the matchmaking system here. Uh, new mode maps. I'm guessing this is expert, you know, expeditions, etc. Uh, this is something I'm looking forward to uh, uh, that I could also, you know, we'll have to see how that plays. End game rewards and system improvements. They talked about reputation system, end game reputation system, reasons to go back and do various different things. Global storage and the barbershop. The barbershop is something I knew was coming because they made such improvements to the character creation that it seems weird that you couldn't change that. So a barbershop coming uh, and, and obviously in the midterm, that is very, uh, very good. And obviously a lot of people are going to be excited about global storage. That's just going to make things so much easier in the long run. Now, and we already covered the in exploration with the uh, zone up levels, new zone, new trade skills, lots of things right here. This in and of itself, I think it is going to hit home that we're going to see a yearly expansion in the live reaction chat. Somebody said that I didn't ever spend money on new world because I didn't know if it had a future, but I'm going to spend money on it now because it clearly does have a future. Hopefully to some degree, this is going to put to bed or continue to put to bed or continue to make those who claim that this game is going away at least second guess that thought. I'm so excited. I'm losing my voice. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. <sighs> oh, yeah, I'm drinking tea and then unironically talking about drama. <laughs> so it is going to be how it is. I want to know from you whether you're a part of this community on Discord. Top link in the description will get you there. What do you think? What stands out to this? What did they give you that you were looking forward to? What did they not give you? And I think that's where I'm, I'm looking at this. Obviously, I'd like to know more about the new weapons. Love, uh, obviously, I wish, wish, wish they would just say, yeah, and we, we know we're going to roll out an, uh, an expansion in October. And ultimately, I would say, I would love it if they just kind of said two years. Like, and, yeah, and the next year after that, we're going to do that and we're going to keep doing that. I think that kind of uh, communication would be thrilling because at any time somebody is like, does this game even have a future? Should I invest in it? Well, the good news is, yes, it does. And you don't have to invest in it if you're on console because they're going to be adding in a free trial of the game on console. It'll be interesting to see if that plays out and rolls out on uh, PC as well. Now, that's uh, what I want to know from you. What do they hit that was that was on your list? What do they miss? Obviously, I think from watching this video, you get what they hit for me and hopefully you get what they missed. And ultimately, I'm really excited to check out 
uh, the future of this game with you guys, especially when we get that cross progression. I'm slowly leveling on Rosa, but this actually lights a fire under that to make it happen. And I haven't been streaming the Rosa stuff because I'm not going to haul up my Xbox and hook it up to my PC. That's just too many steps. I'd rather just play that casually. Now, when this does come, I will be able to continue on Rosa. I will be continuing to, uh, on Maramba, and it's going to be a good fun time. And then we can also be checking out these seasonal world seasons uh, as well. That's going to be that's going to be really interesting to see, especially in the long run. Now, as we wrap up these videos, we want to always end on our message of hope. I know the holidays can be tough for everybody out there. I suffer from seasonal depression, and so I just want to encourage you to continue to fight for yourself, that you're worth love, you're worth living for, you are worth being alive. And I really want, especially as things we get, you know, time can get away from us, the season can have, you know, a, a new year can, can bring some stressors and some anxiety. Listen, I get it, man. But I want you to focus in on winning this fight for yourself, whether that's reaching out to a friend, because I guarantee you that they'd rather hear your story than attend your funeral but also taking care of yourself. And there's a lot of little life hacks that you can do. Now you are unique and you're this individual that I wish I could sit here and give you like, here's the blueprint to fix your life individually. But here's what I want you to focus in on. I want you to get radically curious about your biology, meaning you, your food, the things that you're doing could be having a negative impact on you, but food especially can be so addictive. I know that I just had like a grape for the first time and uh, man, my body craves that stuff. I have I've been off fruit and sugar for over a year plus. And it was like, yeah, so I've decided to bring back uh, fruit with around, um, you know, holy days, celebration days and things like that within the church calendar. And that ends up being something fun. So I got to do that uh, for a recent uh, holy day. And it was really wonderful, but I can feel like my body kind of craves that. And then when you think about ultra processed foods, they're engineered to get you addicted. And if you think of foods like drugs, like, yeah, there's a lot of similarities. They do a lot of good things for you. We, the food isn't bad. It's just a matter of how do you control it? But you might be having reactions to the food, the foods that you're eating, not be aware of it. Also, if you have like an ADHD brain, well, it doesn't mean you're anything less. You actually, I would say, have a superpower, but you might not have been given the tools or the skills to start to hack your life. One tip for the ADHD team out there is a body double. Find somebody to work with whether that's a YouTuber that I hear that works. People will like, I need to clean my house. Like, well, there's a YouTuber cleaning their house on video. That seems to help. That kind of tricks the mind and gets you kind of going. A couple of things I always like to point out is simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Like make your bed, brush your teeth, take a shower. Those three things will take things off of your brain. Every time you walk by your room and your bed's not made deep down subconsciously, there's something that kind of dings you. But if your bed's made, all of a sudden you walk into that room and it's a little bit more peaceful. And it's all about motivating and building on the baby steps to build more consequential changes in your life. But I don't need you to focus in on the big things. I just need you to focus in on the little things this holiday season. Namely, try to have some fun, try to get some rest, make sure you're focusing on your sleep. If, you're if you struggle with a seasonal defective disorder like I do, vitamin D is a huge help. Exercise can be a huge help. And I'm gonna talk to you guys about exercise for just a minute before we wrap up. Do something, find something that you like to do. You don't have to go suffer through like exercise. I happen to enjoy running and weightlifting. That is something that I enjoy. That doesn't mean it needs to translate to you. I don't want you to go be miserable while you're working out. Even if it's just you going for a walk, even if it's, you know, just figure something out that you like to do, put on a podcast and go for a long walk, bring some water and stuff like that. Do whatever it takes to get out there and get physical because it's going to make you a better gamer. It's going to make you overall feel better and it's going to help lead to bigger successes for you on whatever journey that you're on right now. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. God bless you. I hope you all have a safe and wonderful holiday if you celebrate. And if not, safe and wonderful week as well. I'll be off for the next few days and spending some well-earned time with the family. And I wish you guys all the absolute best. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. But until then, take care.